you're still watching ways national donated book day is celebrated on april 14 by readers across the u.s whether it's new or gently used books, you're encouraged to donate them to your local libraries. If the books are not added to the library's collections, they'll hand them to Friends of Libraries. The Friends of Libraries use donated books to load their book sale fundraisers for the library. So donate yours to a local, lo local public library as a means to share knowledge with others. Gloria, have you ever donated a book before? I think the most I've done with books is because, I mean, I have a lot of fiscal, or rather hardcover books, right? What I do sometimes is I give them out to people that I know, okay, hmm, maybe if I hear that you've been wanting, you've been looking for a particular book, or you've been looking for a book that has to do with something that I have, I then share. But I've never done it. I don't think in Nigeria we will really donate books to So I think to like what I've done is um, maybe in secondary school when I outgrow a class, mm -hmm. I just give out my test books. Yeah. That's different from you sitting and saying, okay, let me give this book Doing, to charity or yes, something. Yes. I don't think I've done that before. I know, I know my, my mom used to do that. Our old books, she would take them to some of all those organizations, the, uh, what they call them, motherless babies homes and, and things like that. I'm sure I even have some of my very old things. It's a good practice though. It and I think actually. this is really a good reminder. Like it's good to, you know, do some of those things. It's, it's not it's just really about money anyways. Actually, all the time. Yes. These are things you can actually do. Information, yeah. knowledge, yeah, yeah. Good to share. Mm. Okay, what did you find for us in here today? Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. The Central Bank of Nigeria has proposed that banks should transfer funds in accounts that have been dormant for up to 10 years into a trust fund account. This is, this is contained in the recently released exposure draft of guidelines on the management of dormant accounts, on claim balances and other financial assets in banks and other financial institutions in Nigeria. A circular accompanying the exposure draft stated that the guideline was in response to requests from the banks and other stakeholders for the CBN to clarify the procedures for the management of demand and inactive, account, inactive accounts by banks in the country. This just for real, are they serious? So I'm just imagining, is there even a provision in Nigeria where, you know, maybe someone dies and after a particular time, the, maybe the bank reaches out to next of king. Um, let's just say maybe the banks don't know about it. Just after a period of time, say six years, and an account is dormant, to say maybe try to call the holder of the account, mm -hmm. and if they can't reach the holder of the account to reach the next. I don't think that has that happens. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. sure. Practice. I'm not sure because, how that works. Really. I mean, like, why? I don't understand this. These are people's... <laughs> people's hard end money. People's money. So don't you want to find out the reason why it's dormant in the first place before... No, but I think they will do that. So, before this happens, I want to believe that there's, there's a standard procedure for this. So, before this happens, they'll probably try to find out, okay, have we tried to reach out to this person? I don't trust. Person. I don't I, I don't know. this person's next door? This <laughs> morning they're talking about it. They'll just try to, when they say um, they are tr they'll take it to trust fund. was that trust mm -hmm. fund. Mm -hmm. So so what then happens? What happens in the trust? Okay, happen so what now happens to the money in the trust fund? That's, that's the question. <laughs> Uh, okay, so my news uh, is one that has been making rounds uh, on social media today. The divorce drama uh, between uh, Hakimi, the footballer Hakimi, and the PSG footballer Hakimi and his wife. So divorce drama as footballer Hakimi's wife discovers he owned nothing. Hmm. So he's a Moroccan, uh, Moroccan and PSG footballer and uh, he has become, he's been earning millions of euros as a sportsman in his prime, he's quite young. And his wife had requested a divorce and sought to divide all the footballer's assets equally. But during the court session, it was revealed that he had nothing in his name. And she was shocked to learn that her 24-year-old husband had placed all of his assets and funds in his mother's name. And that he had frequently asked her to purchase items for him. So I, I, I'm playing this in my head and I'm like, okay. So he wants something like, mom, can you please transfer xyz amount or i need to transfer amount to buy xyz mom i need to buy a house can you please pay for this i'm asking does this I, even does this do you think this makes sense i i'm i'm just wondering it's probably there's something from so if i'm i want to analyze maybe something has been going on mm. that made him take such do a that. step because who sits down this is the first time i'm <laughs> really hearing that like you sit down and transfer all your properties in the name of your mom I mean, it shows there's something definitely going on in that yeah, marriage. Yeah, yeah. Something. Maybe he foresaw this coming. But still, and though, he but still though, like, does, is it that bad? The one that is even killing me now is what people are saying on Twitter. Because now people are going around saying, 
um, your wife is not your family. That conversation again, you know, I'm, this conversation has I'm been like, around for some time. I'm like, I don't, does that make sense? How can you say your wife is not your family? So what happens when the husband and wife then have children? So what? The wife is excluded from the family. So it's just the husband and the kids that are the family. God save us. God save us. <laughs> okay. Oh, hmm. Anyway, um, today, like I said earlier, we're going to be discussing cyber crime and cyber security in Africa. And again, we have and experts. I know we were talking about this in the makeup and like thank God we have an expert that will be here to come and break it down for yeah. us and tell us all answer all the burning questions that we have. But then when we come back from the break, we'll continue the conversation.